Welcome to The Rock. We hope what you watch today inspires you. And we'd love to hear your questions and comments via Twitter at The Rock of York. You can also find us on Facebook or contact us through the website at www.rockofyork.co.uk. In the meantime, let's crack on. I've lived an incredibly blessed life. Um, the fascinating way in which God has always been present and, and uh, never absent. It's easy to see God present in when stuff's kind of just going okay anyway. Um, to, prove, to prove this phenomenon, you have to see God doing that when things are not going okay anyway. Uh, when there isn't enough and, and you're not feeling great and things aren't going that well and people are not on your side and things seem against you is when you, when you prove that, that, that God is the ever-present um, kind and, and I have lived a blessed life and intend to live a blessed life for maybe another 30 years if I can make it, we'll see. Um, The, the, within that are some principles that I want to talk to you about tonight. Um, I think they are still part of my life and um, I, I, with some challenges, I prayed a couple of very, very specific things over the last two weeks and, um, and uh, what I prayed came to pass. Now, you know, you think, what about some of the 150 other things sometimes you pray and you know, sometimes we're just speaking in a reaction to the situation. Sometimes you're speaking out of your spirit. Somehow you've caught hold of something that God is doing that you, you become part of what he is already up to. And I want to talk a little bit about that tonight as we... So, Father, I bless you. I thank you for your love and your kindness. And thank you that you're with us. So I want to talk to you tonight about the speed of spirit. Um... There's a verse popped into my, into my mind that I, uh, I needed to look up in this morning. And it's, it's in Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 8. And it says this, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. Uh, it's fascinating that the... The most repeated phrase of Jesus in his ministry, the repeated actual phrase was fear not, fear not, fear not. And I think if you're human like me, you can understand why because um, uh, whenever we face situations that we can't, we can't rationalize and fix and see the end of, we, uh, the natural process is that we tend to be afraid and... Um, uh, Jesus wasn't saying that fear was a sin, but he was saying that fear is not helpful. Uh, and uh, it's one thing to be told, don't be afraid. It's another thing to have the resources that you need deep within your spirit to, to allow that to be a reality and, um, and not to be discouraged. It's easy as well, isn't it, to get discouraged when you, when you see things are tough or not going your way at a given moment. So I want to address this tonight a little bit because it says the Lord goes before you and will be with you. Now, um, there are some people in Christian circles, and I was one of them for, for some years, who <clears throat> use a phrase called the sovereignty of God and will tell you God is sovereign. Usually by that what they mean is that God is in control of everything and nothing that happens is out of his control. Well, uh, Grenfell Towers blows that out of the water for me. It's like, heck, if that's the case, this... You know, there's something, something doesn't hang together. And I, I don't hold to that, to that expression of God being sovereign and being in total control. But I, I, do, I do buy this issue of God entering into partnership with humanity and him going before us. Now, some people think for God to go before you that he has to kind of know everything, you know, uh, all-knowing, and also everything's planned up front. But I think that's because we, 
we look at everything through a, through a Greek or Roman Western mind about how time works and things. And, you know, I said a little bit to you last week about how in the Hebrew mind, the past is, the past is in front of you and the future is behind you and you live in the present. Uh, and how sensible that was because you can see the past but you can't see the future. Therefore, the past must be in front of you. And what you can't see, the future is behind you. So to a Hebrew, uh, repent means stop letting your past define you. That might mean dealing with our inappropriate behaviors, our sins and all the things that, that happen. But, but it means repent is we stop letting that define us and we launch ourselves into this mystery that is, is future. However, uh, God is as much in your future as he is in your present. You say, well, how, how is God in future if he's not like everywhere? Well, because you've got to see time differently. You, you've got to understand that in the Hebrew mind, it's not time goes from here to here and eternity is there and there. In the Hebrew mind, and, and most of the scriptures are written from that perspective, is time is here and eternity is here, Okay. So there are cycles that work side by side and together. So, so the way that time works and where God can be and how is God where God is where he is doesn't work. You, you have to start manipulating scripture if you try to make God present through that Western mindset and that many, many things would be a discussion there. Point, point being this, that, that, that God is involved in what is about to happen. And... Um, goes before you, will be with you, will not leave you or forsake you. So, so if we analyze this, it, it's very interesting because we need to look at a little bit of physics. Um, speed of sound, who knows what the speed of sound is? 767 miles an hour, I know that because I've got Google on my computer. It's 1,235 kilometers an hour is the speed of sound, pretty fast. But then we've got the speed of light. Who knows how fast the speed of light is? 186,000 miles a second. That's pretty fast. 186,000 miles a second. Approximately 299,338 kilometers per second. Pretty fast. But there is a third thing in here which I call the speed of spirit. And uh, how fast is the speed of spirit? We know the speed of sound is, uh, speed of light is phenomenally fast, you know. That's why, incidentally, you, you see the lightning before you hear the thunder crash. Because the light's traveling at 186,000 miles a second, the thunder is only traveling at 767 th uh, miles an hour. So the sound is catching up with the light. They should happen together, okay? But you hear the thunder later because the light travels faster. But there's something faster than the speed of light, and that's the speed of spirit. And this is not weird. This, is, this I believe, is a reality that I hope you'll understand tonight. Um, here's the speed of spirit. Way, way back, a guy called Isaiah, an Old Testament prophet, um, defined the speed of spirit. And it's in Isaiah 65 and verse 24. Here's what he said. Before they call, I will answer. While they're still speaking, I will hear. Before they call, I will answer. In other words, before your thought has a time to formulate into it being delivered... God has already accommodated that and at the speed of spirit is answering before you even say what it is that you wanted answering. Now that, that principle spreads itself through the whole of life when you learn to live in God's kingdom. When you learn to live in the revelation of Abba's house and who, who he is. Before they call, I will answer. Now, I'll do a little, couple of little stories to help you. There's a fascinating story in the Old Testament about a young man by the name of Joseph, and he's the guy about whom the Technical Dreamcoat musical is, Joseph and the Technical Dreamcoat, because his father had given him a coat of many colours. And um, I'm going to do the whole story except to say this, that, that when Joseph was a young man, 17, um, he came out with stuff that his brothers and those around him in the household thought, sorry son, we're not having this. 
This is not, it doesn't follow convention. What you're saying doesn't fit with what we know about life, about the process of, of family, about, about, uh, about ascendancy. It doesn't fit. But he'd said some things and he said it was God, lo and behold, he said, God told me this. And so, so very often when, when somebody says God said something, I mean, sometimes it's utter nonsense, you know, it's like I need to manipulate you, so I'll tell you God said, and hopefully I haven't done that, but I, I might have done it once or twice in my life, I, I don't know, um, you know, when you're passionate for something, but Usually when God says something, it, it, he's saying it because it, it, it doesn't fit with what you would normally arrive at by your own thinking. So it already stretches us because it's like something that you're not just going to come up with unless God actually says it. And I believe God still says things and I, I think, you know, we may not have handled it as good as we can. There may be better ways, but I know that where we're heading is a word from God. I know that it's we are trying to express something that God is saying to us about life, about belief, about community, about God himself. Um, and so this young man came out with something. They didn't like it. So their, their response was, uh, we're going to get rid of him. And uh, ultimately, they finished up telling his dad that he was dead, but they couldn't kill him. His older brother didn't want him to kill him. So they actually sold him to some merchants who were heading down to Egypt. And uh, so this boy Joseph finishes up as a slave and he finishes up in Egypt instead of, instead of in the, the wilderness that was, you know, the old land of Canaan at that time. And um, you'd think that was that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Tough. He opened his mouth. He said his stuff. They got rid of him. Uh, they said nasty things about him. And uh, end of story. But the point is it wasn't the end of the story. And um, he crops up in Egypt and, and by a series of events he finishes up uh, being favoured by the king, then the pharaoh, who by certain things, you can go and read it, you know, advise you to, it's brilliant in the book of Genesis, he, he finds himself in the king's favour and, and um, ultimately what happens is there is a massive famine in the region and, uh, and, and Joseph finishes up basically as what we would understand as prime minister in, in, the, uh, in the government of Pharaoh in Egypt at that time. And he was given charge over the gathering and distribution of food because, again, he had another word from God. He said, for the next seven years, we need to store everything up we can because seven years beyond that, there's going to be pretty tough times and famine. And Andy was right. And, uh, but you wouldn't have known it at the time because nobody was expecting a famine. And again, when the word of God comes, you often think, why would you say that? It doesn't make any sense. Rarely does, okay? So anyway, he finishes up there. But um, what happens while, he, while he's there as the prime minister to Pharaoh, he's now you know, in, in Egypt, he's, he's, he's gone through. The famine's gone through every adjacent country and nobody's got any food. And the only people who've got food is Egypt. So... Joseph's brothers, who were the ones who did him wrong, sold him into slavery, lied about him. Uh, and his dad, his old dad who thought he was dead, because, I mean, how cruel can you be to your dad? Um, to sneak away one of his sons that he loves was his favourite and tell him he's dead. You know, I mean, what grief. I mean, it's like those boys weren't very kind, were they? And uh, sometimes we're not very kind as human beings. They weren't very kind. But turns out the only place they could get food was Egypt. And if you went to Egypt to get food, you had to get it from Joseph. But turns out, of course, that Joseph was Jacob's son and he was their brother. And despite all that had happened to him, he had a, a generous heart, a, a fair heart, a gracious heart that had determined he wouldn't repay evil for evil, but would do good to all people. And we're not always like that, are we? we? We can all be kind and generous of heart and, and say, oh, you know, I'm not a vengeful person when, when we haven't had anything to be vengeful about. How's it, how's it work when you have been treated wrong, when you've, wrong's been done by you, when people haven't acted rightly, when they haven't been fair and just? How are you going to behave then? That's where it counts. That's what I'm in this for, 
to be a difference and make a difference. So anyway, point is, uh, they have to go down to Joseph and Joseph has the food and uh, ultimately it finishes up saving their life. Now, um, before they call, I will answer. They were going to have a word that said, God, we really, we need some provision. We are going to starve to death. But before they call, I will answer at the speed of spirit. God had already worked for what it was that needed to be in place for the point that they came to the realization of how deep they were in the gaga and what needed to happen. The point is, by the time they had realized that, what they needed was already in place and waiting for them. Before they call, I will answer. The Lord himself goes before you, will be with you. And so they sent off to, to Joseph and ultimately finished up um, moving home because not only, was they, not only were they provided for, but um, Pharaoh finished up inviting all Joseph's family to come and live in Egypt and he gave them their own land called Goshen, which, you know, was there to live in and multiply. And there's a, there's a good story that goes with that about don't stay too long in a place where you're blessed because your blessing can turn to a cursing. We're supposed to be on the move, moving all the time into where God's leading us. But that's another story. So I won't take time to talk to you about that today. However, in the middle of this, in the middle of the provision, you don't always feel things are brilliant. The Lord himself has gone before me and is with me and won't leave me or forsake me, very often you feel the exact opposite. And uh, in, in this story, in Genesis chapter 42 and verse 36, we, we get an insight into Jacob, Joseph's dad, who thinks Joseph's are dead. And the boys are trying to buy uh, grain from Egypt because of the famine. And uh, Joseph's trying to figure out, how can I get my dad here? So he pulls a couple of fast ones to see what's going on. And he, um, in it, what he does is he, he, he gets them to leave one of the brothers in Egypt. Says, you know, I'll give you some stuff, but you have to leave your brother here because I don't know I can trust you. So he leaves one of the brothers, Simeon, there. And then he sends a message back uh, to his dad and says, okay, if, if, because his dad didn't know this as Joseph yet. He says, if you really want grain, then I need you to do something else. He said, you have a younger brother, Benjamin. Yeah, well, you've got to send me Benjamin as well. So dad's at home. When they come and tell him this news, he said, this is what he says. He says, their father Jacob said to them, you have deprived me of my children. Because um, uh, Joseph is no more. He thinks Joseph's dead. Uh, Simeon is no more because they've kept Simeon in Egypt, so he thinks the he's history. And now you want to take Benjamin, the, the, the one of the same mother that was Joseph's mother, his youngest son, now you want to take him, and Joseph said, everything is against, uh, Jacob said, everything is against me. Now, the reason I wanted you to see this is that when Jacob was saying everything is against me, he didn't know at that point that he was on the brink of the most delightful amazing, great miracle that he would ever experience in all of his life because it was going to be like life from the dead. It's like something that he thought was dead is about to come alive. But at that moment, there was nothing in his circumstance or environment or story that would tell him that that was reality. And so his thought was, everything is against me. That's the natural place to come to when you see loss and lack and you begin to look inward and think about your own performance and behavior and then you start to feel it's all about me and, and, and I've failed and I've not made it and if only I'd done this and if only I'd done that. And the natural thing when you look at the circumstances is to believe that everything is against me but the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you and will never leave you or forsake you. This is the promise of God. Do not be afraid or be discouraged. Before they call, I will answer. What Jacob didn't realize is that what was formulating in his spirit, God had already answered and the provision was already there waiting for him. It was just a matter of him staying in the place where he could walk into what it was that already actually was there. Nothing needed to be done. It had already been done. 
so that where he was, he could come into what was already done. There's another little story in the, in the um, New Testament. And it talks, about, it talks about Jesus having a conversation with Peter and, and they're being hounded for, for, to pay their taxes and they don't have any money. And things look grim. This is an imprisonable offence. They don't have any money. Peter's absolutely, as some of you would say, breaking it. He is like, this is it, it's up, I can't believe it, you know. I believed you, I've followed you. We've got no money. We've got to pay the taxes, the hounding us. We're going to be in prison tomorrow. And, and Jesus said something to him. He, he said, go, go down to the, to the Sea of Galilee and go out there and, and drop your line and catch a fish. And uh, so Peter goes and does what he's told, and he drops the line and catches the fish. And in the fish's mouth, there is a, a coin. And the coin is exactly the amount that's required to pay the taxes that they owe, which is wonderful, kind of. What's more wonderful is how did the coin get in the fish's mouth? And why was the fish swimming by Peter's boat at the exact time that Peter dropped his line in the water? And how did he know where to take his boat? Why did he choose that time? See, it's not just an issue of, oh, isn't it amazing, the taxes got paid. Can you understand the number of things that had to fall into place for this miracle to happen indicated that the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you and will never leave you or forsake you. So don't be afraid and don't be discouraged because before they call, I will answer somehow, somewhere, somebody at some time dropped a coin into the water. It might have fallen out of a pocket or a torn money bag. I have no idea how, but this fish swallowed that coin. But if that coin hadn't fallen into the water, however it had fallen into the water, for that fish to swallow that coin, Peter's not going to catch that fish with the coin that meets the need. But you see, the miracle has already happened. Before they call, I will answer. The provision's already on its way. Everything that's necessary to bring the blessing and to fulfill the need and meet the need is already in place, just waiting for Peter to turn up, just waiting for Jacob's sons to turn up, just waiting for Jacob to arrive when the brother reveals himself to his other brothers and says, I'm Joseph, your brother, go and bring your dad. I've got a land of plenty here. All that was already in place. It didn't happen when he called. It had happened before he called. It didn't happen when they needed it. It had happened before they needed it, so that when they needed it, it would manifest because it was working at the speed of spirit. Now, the issue with the speed of spirit is that we don't operate, see here, at the speed of spirit. We operate at the speed of time. But the speed of spirit means that by the time we have caught up, with what has happened at the speed of spirit, that's when we see it as a reality in life, but it happened long before. Why? Because the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. I want to encourage you tonight that the miracles we need, the miracle you need, the provision you need, the help you need, the word you need is already in place. It's already moving. It's already happening. There's nothing missing, nothing lacking. Everything is in place and finished. Just waiting for the moment when your line goes into the water. When you set foot into Egypt, when you go to Joseph's presence, before they call, I will answer. Speed of spirit, we are catching up today with what is already happening at the speed of spirit. But you could look around, even congregationally, and say, if we've gone the right way, why have we lost people? If we've gone the right way, why this? Jacob could have said, if I was called by God because I'm the son of Isaac, who was the son of Abraham, and this is the land of promise, why is the famine? Why has Joseph been gone for all these years? Why have they kept Simeon? Why is it that now they want Benjamin? Everything is against me. But you see, stuff was happening that he didn't realize and I preach this message because I want you to lift your spirit because 
for us and for you, for you personally, the Lord himself goes before you. And some of you are thinking, everything is against me, but the Lord himself has gone before you. And he will be with you and will never leave you, never forsake you. So don't be afraid or be discouraged. But isn't it easier to live in fear and discouragement than it is in faith and confidence that said, God knows what I need before I ever need it and before I can shape the words that express what it is that we need to see, God has already gone before and made provision because before they call, I will answer. So here's my last comment. The stuff that makes the miracle that meets your story to move it in a new direction is already happening. Let me say that again. The stuff that makes the miracle that meets your story to move it in a new direction is already happening. How many of you tonight can maybe just step away a little bit from being afraid and being discouraged and say... Maybe God has had long enough to prove that this is true. Maybe the faithfulness of God has been a reality for longer than I've been on the face of the planet and longer than the issues that I've been dealing with for this short period of time. Maybe God's actually very good at what he does and maybe he still loves me and maybe he still cares about me and maybe I might be like Jacob saying everything is against me but actually what is happening is that the stuff that makes the miracle that meets your story to move it in a new direction is already happening. Because it is. And so I want to pray for you right now. That by faith you will take hold of that. And maybe you know, all of us need to take steps of faith every day. Steps of faith that take us out of the realm where we're only conscious of what we see with the natural eye happening at the speed of time when we need to be conscious of what is happening at the speed of spirit. The fish is there, the provision's there, the person's in place. The need is met, but our story is being moved in the direction that meets that provision. Last Saturday was one of those for me. An impossibility that looked like it would never happen. And I have to admit, I came in here last Saturday afraid, discouraged, looking at what I saw and thinking everything is against me. But actually, while I was thinking all that... God had already been moving and doing things and arranging things and sorting things and preparing things, which Dumbo here suddenly realized that it had already been met. God was already doing it. God had already met it. I will go before you and will be with you, will never leave you, will never forsake you. So do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. God is with us. God is for us. God is with you. God is for you and the Lord himself is going before you with your provision because the stuff that makes the miracle that meets your story to move it in a new direction is already happening. How many of you want to believe that? How many of you are willing to believe that? Okay, if you are, let's just stand and pray. Oh Lord, you're not a liar. You're certainly not that. In in all our confusion sometimes about who you really are you're not a liar and uh, there's so many things that I cannot explain in my life and I think sometimes why the heck do I ever come back to the place again of thinking everything is against me or somehow assuming that you have not actually gone before me. And, 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 and the times when I belittle your goodness by thinking that somehow you're trying to catch up with where I am, rather than me catching up with where you are. I believe that you've gone ahead of us tonight, every one of us. I, I believe that you're not having to catch up with the story and catch up with the needs and the issues, but you've already gone before. Tonight, Father, this is my prayer. Help us to catch up with you. Help us to catch up with what has happened at the speed of spirit, massively fast, quick, amazing, significant. Help us to catch up with that here in this moment and in each moment of our lives. 
and to have confidence in that and not be afraid because of your promise towards us and that you are with us. And so, Lord, let there be a spirit of faith, I pray, rise up in every heart in this place tonight. We rebuke fear in us and we reconnect to your goodness to break the power of discouragement, knowing that our story is unfolding and it's meeting the stuff that you have done already that moves us in the new direction. So thank you for your promises. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your blessing. And thank you that you're with us now. Help us to live in the knowledge of the speed of spirit working on our behalf as we share and express the miracles that are breaking out among us right now. The great things that are already in place and happening that we are on the brink of some of the greatest things that we have ever seen. I believe it, I receive it, and I thank you for it in me, in this house, in every life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, be blessed, and uh, if you want to go play around us, go play around us. Woo. Thanks for watching. You can find out more about all the Rock is doing locally and internationally at www.rockofyork.co.uk And why not support The Rock from wherever you are? Just hit the donate button now to help us help others.